TFNN. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. Brought to you by Nadex. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. We appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. Right now, we have the Dow Industrials up 123. Nasdaq's up 10. S&Ps are up 7.5. Gold. Gold's down 11.20, trading at 13.30. You get silver down at 22 cents, $16.31. Notes and bonds. A little uh, ever-ready bunny. Don't want to stop. 10-year note up 5 ticks, 120.102. 30-year bond up 9 ticks, 145.29. King dollar, King dollar up uh, 482 ticks, 89.465. Euro is at 123.46 to one U.S. dollar. Yen is at 106.23 to one U.S. dollar, and uh, it's green. It's I was going to say we're going to jump to our man Kevin Hicks, Hicks shortly, and we're talking about a two-way market, man. And yesterday. It Showed its face again, oh, man. Boy. My goodness, right? Showed. Positive 200 pre-market, and if we're paying attention, we know where the day ended, man. Yeah. Pretty remarkable. And let's go to the epicenter of trading in general, and that's where that is, folks. That's TD Ameritrade. That's Chicago, Illinois. And out here this morning, uh, you get uh, the good old CME folks is uh, in close talks that they're going to end up taking over uh, next group, uh, which is, you know, most of us don't know it. I didn't know it. But the bottom line is that they're a monster in London. And um, you know, sometimes I, I love Boston, but sometimes I wish I was born in Chicago so I could have been <laughs> hanging out with Kevin Hinks earlier. There we go. Kevin Hinks, what's going on? Good morning, O'Brien family. You know, I'll tell you what, these markets are like Chicago weather. <laughs> Just wait a few minutes, it'll change. I'll tell you, man, it's pretty intense. There's no doubt about it, you know? They've had a full trading week today since, yeah. since this morning when I got in the office. So, I mean, it's amazing the run that they're on, both up and down. This is the definition of a two-way market. N no doubt. Kevin, what, what had happened is that um, I was doing the update, Tommy walks in, I just said to him, I says, you know, the, the NQs just went from 78 down to flat. Yeah. And now we're only talking two minutes later, now we're down 25 again. I it's, had to chuckle when I did the, uh, did the update because we were up at 68.50 yesterday, pre-market. Yeah. And we were down at 64.50. Right. 400 NASDAQ 100 points right. in 24 hours. Right. I mean, this market is really starting to rip. And it's both directions, right? Definitely. What I think you have here is a lot of futures and stocks changing hands. Yes. And, you know, a lot of people taking profits and a lot of people getting back in. I thought the data today, the uh, the. The GDP data was good, a little stronger than a market that, that, than we thought. But yet, we sit here at a, at a 10-year yield that's 2.76. Right. right. Oh, and listen, it's intense. You know what's interesting, Kevin, is that I remember the first time, um, actually the first time when, when the Qs came on board yeah. uh, in the 90s, right? I, I was interviewing the, it was the vice president of the American Stock Exchange then, because that's who owned the Qs at that point, right? And... What was so intriguing is that I don't think anyone really understood what an ETF could actually do to markets on the way up or nor on the way down. Right. And what happened is that no one really really got it until the way down because what ended up happening at that point, it was Dell, Microsoft, uh, Intel, and... Uh, Qualcomm, maybe? Yeah, there's no. one. Uh, they okay. were the, and, and if they went up, everything went up. If they went down, everything went down. And when I was watching the market yesterday, you know, I said, you know what, Though, because the S&Ps, I mean, they had two 10-point runs down. I said, you know what, everyone better get used to how this ETF structure works because there's so many of them. And it's the chicken or the egg. You sure. know what I mean? If yep, exactly right. And, you, and you're really talking about, you know, oh, well, I don't own Facebook. Wait, are you sure you don't? Yeah, because exactly. Because the ETFs, you have have Facebook in them, right? T totally. The holdings, right. Totally. If anybody has a 401k with any type of diversification, you probably have Facebook somewhere you, in that indice. You, you, you better have it. You, you, seriously, <laughs> somehow. Right, right, right. right. Facebook, you know, their news today was, I thought, fairly significant. You know, this is a company, guys, that doesn't like to be on the, on the headlines. Yes. Right? They ignore a lot of press that, that they get. But now, suddenly, 
you've got, you know, they unveiled their new privacy policy today. Right. To, you know, that, that's a big deal, I think, for them. And, and the stock is up three bucks. It was up three, uh, three dollars pre-market, came all the way back down to be down in the day. Now it's up again. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, when we talk uh, TD Ameritrade, folks, swim lessons every trading day, uh, 11 o'clock. Yeah, just yesterday alone, we, we, I know we had a couple tigresses in the den. They would trade this in the option market, and it was a great trade. I mean, you know, you, you had a trade that went from 150 to 162 back to 152. In terms of the market you know, action yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right. that's what, when you're looking for defined risk, uh, and that's what we're talking about when you get a two-way market. On a two-way market, bulls and bears can make money. It, doesn't, it, right. it, it sure. just doesn't, you know... Which is really cool, man. Do you know what I mean? Because and that's the three things we we, we we preach, Tom. It's risk definition. It's using theta on your side, and it's high probability trading. You get those three working together, and doesn't it doesn't guarantee anything, but it means you've got the best chance. Right, exactly. Right. I had to do a that's double. All your, that's all you need, right? I was just gonna, I had to do a double take when I said, "Wait, we was that 400 Nasdaq 100 points that it, you know?" And, I, I know. Mean, that's, you're talking about only an indice at 6800. Well, 1% is 68 points, 400 points, and it's been up and down. It was just yeah. remarkable. In my head, I chuckled at this, and my goodness, so, yeah. So watch this. You know, what ends up happening, folks, depending, well, anyway, I talk to myself sometimes during the day. Newsflash, no, yeah, no. Yeah. Exactly, right? <laughs> and so a couple of weeks ago, Kevin, right, I was saying, you know, the NASDAQ always leads up and always leads down, but, like, that just kept going. I says, man, you know, is it different this time? And I says, well, we, I know nothing is ever different. And sure enough, what ends up happening? Those, it, it just, you can go back as far as you want. Technology rules everything, man. And it's great when it's going up, but man, when it takes it apart, it takes everything apart, man. Remember, remember where we were six months ago, Tom, when they're saying the VIX is dead. Oh, I yeah. know. The ability is we know it is dead. And that just always makes me laugh. Yes. Doesn't it? I chuckle when I'm like, you, you, you know, no one realizes yeah, you know, the the overall. Well, I should, shouldn't say no one, but so many people get so complacent so quickly and are so so short sighted that you really got to pay attention to the long term fundamentals of these markets. No, yeah. you do, and you know, like the same last night I'm driving home and I'm thinking a conversation you, Tommy, and I had when we saw that big trade of rolling over those VIXs. You know he's in the money big now. I mean, forget it, man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's, exactly. you know, and I don't know how many months that he, got, sure. he, he went, but guess what? That's, now, now that's, now we get a normal 22, right? Right, we've been above 20 for a while. Yeah. yeah. Right. You gotta love it. And, and yeah, so, I mean, a 20 VIX, what's that telling you? That's telling you about a one and a quarter percent move a third of the days. We're clearly get, oh. getting that if it's a 20 VIX. It should almost be a little higher, right, Kevin? Right. I mean, if at least yeah. in the last week or two, right, well, yeah. What you're looking at, it seems much more like a 24 VIX. I agree. Yeah. Number to me. Yeah. That's the, we were looking at it yesterday, that's it was like, wow. When I opened up uh, the chart to see, and I was out and about yesterday, I didn't get to see the market action. Yeah. When I pulled it up this morning and I said, I wonder what the VIX did last night when right. the markets, you know, you had the NASDAQ down, what was it, 2.8% or yeah. something? Yeah. And the VIX only went to 24. Uh, well, the indices were down over 2%. That should be yeah. almost a 32, right, Kevin? Right. So, exactly yeah. Right. But oh. remember, Tommy, it's got to be, it's got to consistently. On the average, right, right. for sure. Folks, right here, 45 minutes and out. You want to understand strategies, options, futures, TD Ameritrade. Kevin, have a great one, safe one. Look forward to the show in 45 minutes. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks, Kevin. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Thank you.
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. We take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks, and hold on for the ride. As we were just talking when I'm in, Mr. Kevin Hanks, the Dow is up 100. Guess what? You're up 10. Uh, NASDAQ right now is down 40. Uh, the NQs are down 63. Let's go inside the Dow first and see uh, strength versus the weakness out here. So point-wise, what you have out here is that uh, you have uh, Home Depot putting 10 positive points. Uh, Boeing is uh, <laughs> Boeing minus 18, Apple minus 12, Intel minus 9, Chevron minus 4. 4.8. Uh, Tesla is a big number out here today. Um, look at this gap down. I mean, I saw it yesterday, but that's interesting. Down oh. another $15, huh? I saw the picture of the car that went on fire. Okay. Oh, my God. Yeah. I've seen cars go on fire, but let me tell you something. These lithium batteries, man, <laughs> it, this picture is going to hurt Tesla. Okay, I haven't it, seen it, it yet. It's just, it, no one got hurt. Yeah. Uh, but the car, you know, it's like, oh, do you really want to get inside a car like that? I sure. mean, it's, oh, it's intense, man. Yeah. Um, you know, big number, man. Uh, and with Tesla, you know, what it did yesterday is that it broke out of its uh, range. And that's that's a big problem, man. Yeah, you I know, mean, we were just at $360. Yeah. 30 days ago in, in February, you're now at 260. It's $100 right. off the top. And you're in the lower range now. Right. No, I agree. That's, right. that's a big problem, man. Uh, now, Google, you know, it, what's going to be interesting, just in a context, Google um, looks to me like it's going to break down, too. Uh, it just dipped below this lower range this morning, which is 992, went to 980. That gap is wide open. This is really dangerous because if yep. Google does break that range, they, yeah. unfortunately for them, are in the Facebook conversation because, yeah. um, you know, I've seen articles, <clears throat> excuse me, articles out there just with how much information Google has on you. Oh, sure. Um, with, you know, your Gmail, Google, you log into your Chrome browser, they have everything My you've ever phone. clicked on, and then yeah. you have, <clears throat> excuse me, YouTube as well. So when you combine oh, Gmail, yeah. you, you combine your Chrome browser, right. and you combine YouTube. Right. That's that's quite a, a lineup of Perfect information that they profile. have. Exactly. You know, every video you've ever watched, every ad you've ever clicked on within Chrome, and let alone how they combine your emails, I mean, which is wow. probably more information they can get off anything in terms of reading every single word that's ever been written to you or you've yeah. written. Wow. Scary stuff, right? It really is, man. So, 
Wednesday. Wednesday. That's oil. right. It is oil day, so we have our EIA numbers coming at 1030. It's just after 1020 Eastern Time. Let's jump over to the Nadex platform. So we have the crude oil May contract up here, currently trading 64.48. Okay, so just under 64.50. 1021 on the dot. We got about nine minutes till those numbers come out for the inventories. So I was jumping around. I jumped to the 11 AMs first, as in the 9 till 11s. Okay, yeah. these are expiring at 11. And we're looking for a volatility trade. Yeah, yeah, so what we like to do is find a spread with bullish potential, maybe buy that, find a spread with bearish potential downwards, sell that, right. right? And then you have exposure both ways regardless, and you're just looking for volatility. Now, again, if you're just bullish or biased, you can just buy one or other of these. Sure. Now, the 11 AMs are going to line up. We, we could use either 64.75 could be our point. You see we have a bearish spread going down to 63.25. We have one going up to 66.25. It's about 25 cents away. But I jumped in ahead of time, and the noons, which is nice because you yeah, have an extra, extra hour. hour is big. And these line up actually perfectly with 64.50. Okay, okay so right where we're trading. Yeah, we're a penny and a half away from there. So, to lay out the example that we could take a look at, here's your 64.50 up to 66. We could buy this spread. Okay, now this is going to be costing us, it looks like about $28, okay. $27 as yeah. we tick around. And that's all premium. It because is. Because we're right at the that's bottom nice. end of this spread, okay? And then the bearish spread, and I already know, since we're right at 64.50, right. it should be identical. Right. Because it's just premium. It right. Is. There's no yeah. intrinsic value. Now this is jumping around. Now the bearish one's gonna have about four pennies of intrinsic okay. value, okay? So call it twenty seven dollars times the two, fifty four dollars about. Right. Okay. Um, and oil has had some volatility. It has. In, in context, that's a little expensive and it's just expensive probably because there's more volatility priced in yeah. there because the market's been Jumping around, well, it, it, and it's it, hit, now, it got over the highs yesterday. Couldn't yeah. take it. It went to 66 something it yesterday. Did. 66 yeah. 40, I yeah. think it was up right. there. Um, so, and again, if you're just bullish or bearish, what's nice in these is that you could purchase either of those for 27 dollars on just one side, right. right? Just to lay out. But it is nice when you don't have to have a direction if you don't want to. You just have to be bullish volatility exactly. coming into the news. Okay, and that's where we like to set it up. So again, we're just about four pennies away from the number. Now, as we're four pennies away, we're in the bearish side of that, so we'd have value to the negative side. That's why that one's going to be a little bit more expensive, yeah. and you can see how they shift a little bit. But still, relatively, you're looking at $55, okay? Right. You're just getting a little bit of a shift of where the... Five and a half pennies, folks. 55 pennies, right? right? 55, right. 55 pennies. sorry, yes. Yep, yeah. away from 64.50. Right. So for simple math, you know, you would need anywhere, you know, just slightly above $65, you start to break even, or slightly below $64, yeah. you start to break even, and you have value anywhere away from 64.50. Um, so let's just take a look and see how these 230s line up. Yeah, so those are going to be using a price point of $65, okay? So that's where, you know, you could make that trade, but just for an example, your bearish spread is going to have all the intrinsic value. Right. It's going to be heavily bearish, you know, because if you wanted to then offset it with the volatility one to the upside, you can see how, man, you got to go Ooh, all the way to 65 cents. before yeah. you start going... Um, and getting any value, right. so it really becomes a pretty bearish trade when you're that far away from yes. the strike price. Um, so we laid it out. We have about fifty-four dollars for both of those contracts. Yeah. Price of oil is trading about three pennies under sixty-four fifty, sixty-four forty-seven. And yeah, to back it up, I mean, we did have some big time, and there it is. So we were up at sixty-five. Is that sixty-six? Even? I think. Right. Yes, thank you. 66.32, 66. I mean, we we're up yeah. there. You know, we were. We're about two dollars off of that level, and that's only going back to yesterday morning. We're right. talking about so, barely 24 hours for yeah. sure. Um, so the news comes out in five minutes. If you want to make that trade, you're risking about 55 dollars both contracts, and again, every dollar being about a penny, so 55 cents away from that price Pretty point. Cool. We'll see five minutes till the news. Totally. And let me uh, bring this up right now. So let me just see this thing. So. Now, this is a delayed quote, but it looks like it's pretty close right it now. It is, because right. oil's kind of been hanging at that right. price point for the last and at least 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, see what you're going to see. Yesterday, that's 6602. We got to, well, that was the day before, 6655. We did it again yesterday. Yeah, 6640. Oh, excuse you. me, folks. Bless you. So let me see here. So we got a failure at the high. Get down by it. Well, this is interesting. So this is intraday. Oh, look at this. This is going to be cool watching this. So intraday, folks, 
like the last time we came down, we had some decent volume here. Um, 64.40. And it looks like we come into it again. Yeah, this looks like it wants to come down a bit. This is going to be cool watching this thing shake out to see uh, we get the bull, we get the bear. That's right. You know, if we go over to, uh, you know, these, so far, like Exxon hasn't been able, able to hold price, meaning the February 9th level. Um, Chevron, same deal. Chevron's stronger than Exxon. I can't wait to see how this whole thing shakes out, though, because the difference in how they are reacting compared to how they reacted in 2014. The stocks as oil the trades. The stocks, yeah. Yes. What had happened is that the stocks did go south before oil, but only like about a week. These stocks went south like almost a month and a half and oil's at highs. Okay. You know, so it's gonna be like, okay, so who's gonna be right? The physical market or the equity market? Right. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I uh, coming right back uh, with those uh, oil numbers. We have the Dow Industrials up 40, NASDAQ down 43, S&P's up five, we're coming right back. Would you like exposure to the foreign currency markets without any downside risk to your principal? Then consider the Petro Currencies Market Safe CD from Everbank. This three-year U.S. dollar-denominated CD leverages the performance of four equally weighted currencies from these top oil-producing countries, Brazil, Canada, Mexico, and Russia. This CD features a 200% leverage factor, which means that your potential upside payment will be double the currency's average performance at maturity with no cap if the currency's increase in value over the CD's term. And if the returns are negative, your principal's 100% protected. Returns are based on CD performance with no correlation to the price of oil, and there is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. The April 19th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a division of TIAA FSB member FDIC. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, so let's take a look at this. So top line number, crude oil inventories rise 1.64 million barrels. And there's a bunch of it different. You know, there's a Bloomberg user estimate. There's yeah. a median analyst estimate. But one of these, at least, was that Bloomberg users expecting about a 750,000 barrel rise. Okay? okay. So we had 1.64. Now we have gas in there as well. Gas inventory is falling 3.7. But that's going to be a headline number in crude. And let's jump back over to Nadex and see how that market's reacting. We'll jump into our crude and pull up the chart so I can see 6460, a little bit of volatility, nothing too dramatic quite yet. We were trading at just under 6450, right, when those yeah. numbers came out. And so we would have had value anywhere away from 6450, basically 6450. That is your max loss because each contract is going to have value, the bullish one from 6450 upwards, bearish one from 6450 downwards, 6450 being your max loss. And... Um, yeah, and what uh, to pull that back real quick, so here are the numbers again to get into them. So you had Cushing crude up 1.8 million barrels, Pad 3 crude down 5.1 million, gasoline came in at a decline of 3.4 million barrels, estimate was about a decline of 2.3. We're using gasoline. We definitely are. And um, yeah, you know, but the headline number is that you had more crude than kind of the estimate. And that's interesting that as we jump back to the platform, getting a little bit because the products we used, uh, you know, versus the, the crew. There's right? a lot of numbers that come out right at 1030 in terms of demand is in there, right? Everything in terms of output, production, let alone just the inventory numbers. Um, so currently 64.68, about an 18 penny rise. And as we talk, as it climbs, we'll see where we go. Uh, we're just up at what, 66.40. So it has some room to run if it might catch a, catch a bid. Um, but we'll, we'll check back in and see how that oil market reacts. Sweet. Definitely. And that's, uh, that's yeah, on one side of the, tr the volatility, you were basically getting a little of it, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, right now, you know, again, anything above 64.50 and the bullish side is going to have value. So you're looking yeah. at about 25 cents, which will be $25, right. um, give or take. And to back this down again, we're looking at the noons. Yeah. Here would be your bullish spread, okay? And there's still some volatility in here. So even though it's at 64.75, if you wanted to close this out, you'd be getting some of that premium. Which okay. is cool. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So right now you could take thirty-five dollars off the table if you wanted of to. Of the fifty-five. Uh, yep. Yeah. Thirty-seven. Call it right, right now, even as it keeps climbing. Um, look at that. Look That's at that market cool. as right. it keeps rocking. Right. Um, man, I can't even keep track of it. So now you're up to almost forty-four. Okay. Yeah. And you know, let's say you were more bearish than bullish. If you were. You could take that trade off, cover a majority of your investment, yes. and then if you got that reversal that you were looking for, because there was more oil than they thought. Right. Headline. I mean, right. that should be you know more right. supply. Yep. Prices should come down on on just a straight economical economics of it. Um, but that get, remains active until noon. You know, exactly. and either way, depending on what you want. But which yeah, you which get, in the in this market in general, noon is like. Three or four days yeah, away. We're only three minutes away, right? <laughs> and look at these are five minute bars. Right. And um, you know, if you're doing these trades, if you're making these trades, you want to be quick because I mean, check that out. We sure. were just up to having forty four dollars. We're now back to having about thirty two, thirty three, um, on a percentage wise basis. That's a big number. It we're is talking about. Oh, it you definitely know, is. Um, and you can see the spikes and the moves. All right, so we're four minutes into the news, and wow. we had ninety minutes in that trade after the news. So Which we'll is, see where. Yeah. We'll check back in. All right. So Tesla as well. Why don't I hear? We'll oh, keep yeah. that one up because we were talking about that. Go ahead. So there was two two accidents, right? There was the one in Arizona that unfortunately killed the pedestrian. Yeah. And then there was another one Friday in California, um, and that is the one that had the fire. And so it looks like Tesla shares dropped on a second day as questions swirl about what caused a crash involving a Model X crossover in California on Friday, an accident that killed the driver and intensified the pressure. So I believe that's the one that had the fire. So that was the driver in the car. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure, but that's, you know, a picture and you can see that the, the flames definitely ripped through there. So right. I don't know, you know, they'll be looking into that, but you know, it's, they have not good stories and not good stories for, for loss of life, no matter what, but right. in terms of the, the stock and, and pictures like that. And I hadn't seen the, the picture of um, the, the video of the fire. The, 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 the picture is like, oh. <laughs> oh, I bet. I mean, you can. I mean, that's for sure. And it does say that. Uh, and I'm just trying to slide down. You know, because they have some self-driving features in there. 
I wanted to get because they did talk about the battery in here. Here we go. Yeah. So Tesla's battery packs are designed so that when a fire occurs, it spreads slowly so people have more time to exit the car. Well, what if you're knocked out or something? That's yeah. uh, this is, you know, that's where they're going to, that appears to be what happened here is, as <clears throat> we understand there were no occupants still in the Model X by the time the fire could have pr presented a risk, the company said. Well, that's the company saying that. We'll see what the investigation the shows. caused extensive damage partly because of safety barrier meant to reduce the impact into a concrete lane divide that had been removed or crushed in a prior accident without being replaced, That's according to Tesla. Yeah, Tesla. Tesla. I mean, each of those are all according to Tesla, the company said. You know, that's their PR, and it could be true, but that's their PR people. Oh, that's yeah, not yeah. the official right, saying. Right, right. Um, but we, know, we all know how those, you know, dividers do work. I mean, you can see it's right near the divider. If those dividers weren't there and there's some concrete that they Oof. just ran into, you know, you're in the middle of a highway um, there for sure. Pretty intense. It man. is, and they're still, I mean, they're down $20 today. I think they're continuing to decline. As, oh, yeah, as listen, we, man, that thing is barreling. For sure. You know? Let's go to our man, Jim in Palm Harbor. Hey, what's going on, brother? Hey, how you guys doing today? I'm doing great, man. How you been? Oh, great. I love this uh, Palm Harbor weather right now. Oof, <laughs> yeah, right? it's so true. Oh, my God. Down here right now, it's like 75 with no humidity, folks. It's yeah. crazy. Crazy good. Right. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, I, I called today. I'm interested in a little bank stock called uh, FHN. Uh, UBS uh, gave it a buy today, but I'm looking in it on a weekly FHN. chart. It looks like it's in a consolidation mode from about uh, uh, 9 2017 till today. And I was thinking if I could get it down around $18. That it had, uh, most people got a twenty-two dollar price target with an average of nineteen dollar price target, uh, nineteen some price target. But I was thinking that if I could get it at eighteen for a long-term hold. Okay, let's take a look at it. So it's First Horizon uh, National Corporation. Um, Looks like I saw their website is First Tennessee, so maybe they're okay. somewhere in there. Yeah, I yeah. think that's it. And Six billion dollar company market cap, so it's amazing what to be a small bank entails in no, terms totally. of right. They're just, and it's, it was intriguing here; they must have just bought someone because it looks like they're going to go from 1.3 billion to 1.8. Oh, they just did, right? Yeah, they just did. Yeah, they they just bought uh, or had a merger or bought uh, Capital Bank. Okay, okay, so they bought the asset. Um, this is strength. Yeah, I mean that's. This has been in a long-term consolidation. Let me pull this back. It's a little bit more. It looks like a monster ABC up, but it probably already finished. So that would be 1580. That's only $4. That's 18. Yeah, I see what's going on. So what what this did, Jim, this finished an ABC up, but this is going way back to 2016. Um, I like this setup because this is like a high-end consolidation. Like if we if we look at how the highs are versus the lows are, you get some volume up at these highs. So, yeah, like 1730 would be awesome. <laughs> Just looking at the high around September 8th. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So even 18, scale it down there. It's not, that's a good setup, man, because the, the thing to keep your eye on is that, what day is that? That's the, December the, the 8th. week of February 8th. That's December pushing, 8th. December, December 8th. That's pushing with volume. Stay right there. Come right back. Okay. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. 
Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his gold report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN. TFNN, live on your mobile device, 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow right now uh, down 54. Nasdaq's off 73. S&Ps are off 13. The NQs are off 104. Uh, volatility in spades. You get the Nasdaq down 1%. Uh, we're talking with our man Jim from Palm Harbor. We're talking about First Horizon. Yeah, the way this is set up, Jim, you know, bottom line is that, um, you know, we're in a correction anyway. I mean, I just, you know, just wait for your, wait for your price, man. Um, okay. You know, that 1789 is good, the 1747, you know. And as I said a little bit earlier, I how that moved the week of December 8th, that's a nice setup, man. It's pushing into the swing with volume. You're pulling back with light volume. You know, a longer-term deal is like, okay, it's not, it's not a bad setup, man. Okay. Sounds great. I really appreciate you and Tommy. You do Great job, great work, and I really appreciate it. I watch you every day. <laughs> well, thank you so much. We appreciate you growling a problem with us out here, man. Yeah. You guys have a wonderful day. You too, Thanks man. for calling, Jim. Have a great one, man. Okay. So let's check back in on our oil. We've yeah. gotten a little bit of volatility. So, oh, jeez. <laughs> that is a surprise. So I Look was, at that. I was going to mention that we had gotten some volatility all the way above 65. Again, these are five-minute bars. We hadn't checked back in in a couple minutes, and man, quite a reversal. Look at that. So the first move is not always the move that carries. We say it sometimes, Isn't that and today intense? that comes to fruition. So pretty interesting that I was remarking that one yep. of the strategies you could employ, right, exactly. is if maybe you were a little bit bearish, you could take some money off the table, even if you didn't cover your entire investment. But right. guess what? We got up to the level. We just weren't covering it. Where right. you could have covered your entire investment. Oh. We, got, we got up to 65.11. That would have been at least 61 cents of intrinsic value. Right. Let alone there may have been some premium still in there. You needed so 55. Yep. To cover your investment and now to re reverse things. So that could wow. have been an exit on the bullish spread. Okay? Right. The bearish spread would have been the one that was left open. Yes. And now you can see that already, even though we're at 64.37 as the price continues. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to buy that back, you would have $21 of value there, let alone if you want to let that run, whatever your market bias might happen to be. But man, some volatility for sure. Okay, we'll check back in in 60 seconds, see where it is now. <laughs> We're only 14 minutes into it. We are, yeah. We 
we, we, on the we, dot now, We right? have, bottom line, folks, is that you get 90 minutes on this trade. Right, as in you had 90 minutes at 10.30 when the numbers right. came. We'd have now wow. 75 minutes from this point if you were trading the 12 o'clock. That's um, insane. And if man. you decide to close out one, the other one, of course, remains active right. until that 12 o'clock expiration. Pretty interesting, and it's not stopping. And what is interesting, too, is just that there was more oil than they thought. So intuitively, that should be a decline in price, right? But as we said, there's a lot more numbers that come in in terms of imports, exports, gas, even regional production yeah. imports. Um, so. Now, what's interesting, let's go, I want to go over, because, you know, the Dow just took a tank, and I want to go over to Exxon, because and, 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 I'm curious to see, did that take it? No, nah, that, that's only still down eight. So I was just, you know, I was looking and saying, okay, was it, Oil that stocks, but it wasn't. So let's see uh, inside this Dow who just tanked it. It's probably Boeing, right? <laughs> oh, it's Intel. All uh, right, well, Boeing. Eh, it's it's no, kind of spread. It was it's it was spread, it, right? Boeing was a decent though. That yeah. was only down about 280, I think, last okay. we checked, putting about 18 negative points. Um, now it's putting 35 negative. Yeah. Apple putting 17. Intel putting 13. Yeah. How about um? Edge, so therapeutics or pharmaceutical, and Dave White was bringing that up in the, uh, it's just Edge if you want to pull up the symbol. Okay. So they are a pharmaceutical company. They had some problems with oh my God. a trial last night, and um, their market cap went from about $500 million down to about $40 million this morning. Look at this. Yeah. Okay, clinical stage biotech company. Yeah, this is a total wipeout. Oh, yeah. It went, and what's it's interesting was it was down, down $14.08. Yeah, it was, it was a $16 a dollar. Dollar stock yesterday. And, I mean, it had price action yesterday, which is interesting. Um, that, you know, and, yeah, as Dave's saying in the den right now, one trick pony, it must be. And that one trick wow. pony, unfortunately, just uh, got negated, it seems. Wow. Yeah. So, you had everything. And that's where you just want to be careful trading these biotech companies oh. because the fundamental aspects in terms of understanding where they are in the yeah. stages of those trials, how, you know, what's going on. Because you're basing everything off of. Um, I haven't seen this for a while. That's pretty intense. That's, yeah. Imagine I can't even. Well, you, and you know what happens here? Is let me just see. I'm curious. This HP. What kind of? I see. So they never had volume either. Well, no, they get they get volume. They get eight hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. Right. You know. Let me see how many shares are outstanding. So you got. Uh, 30 was million. It 30 million, yeah. Whoa, baby. Right. Yep. That's, I mean, the market cap yesterday, I was looking at it, it was like 480 million on the close. So it was over a half billion dollar company yesterday. Um, pretty remarkable. So to jump around, how about Lululemon? They came out with their earnings, yeah. right? Lulu doing well. Lulu's doing well. Performance at leisure doing well. This is, like, this is like an ABC up. And that's, you know, that's saying that, guess what? Yeah. The, you know, if you have the right product, evidently, you know, people will buy it, right? Yeah. And we've seen, you know, in terms of um, brand, is so important these days. Yeah. Um, Lulu brand obviously doing well. And look at this. This is this is going to be big, folks, because this has been consolidating. Let's say since 2012. And you know, you take that out, and you know, that's that's going to be a big deal, man. You know, and look at this, man. This always blows my mind. So you had you had a nice high volume high at 82.52. Looking at June of 2013. Yep. You came down there, but didn't break a swing. Start pushing a little, uh, what's that, four months ago. Yep. And that's uh, somewhere in there the CEO stepped down. And I, I think, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe it was here. No, I think it was later. Than, I think it was recently. This is, what is this, a monthly? So can we get into, let's do like a one year, even weekly. Maybe this was even going back. There's, I mean, there it was, was a that, couple years ago, that, I think. If you do, 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 do a three-year weekly. No, I f I f okay. I, I feel like it was just somewhat recent as part of the sexual scandals going on that the CEO stepped down as part of that. Um, yeah, that, that was probably where it was. Uh, August no. 2016? No, maybe it was right here. Yeah. March 2017. March. Well, well, that Imagine that's last year. year ago. Isn't that cool? Yeah, I know. No, it is. What's that quick? Yeah. The, the impressive thing here, which is pretty wild, is that you know, it's like you bring these up later, and like the stock was forty-seven dollars last year, and now you're at eighty-six. Yes. You know, so it's showing. Guess what? We are buying uh, high-end clothing. Yeah. 
And I think they, they expect they're somewhere just under maybe a $2 billion sales company a year, and I think they want to be like a $4 billion company by like 2022, which is not that far away. And that's probably part of what's rocking and rolling. No doubt. Yeah. Let's go take a look at the NDX 100. Now, this is leading the market down once again. Uh, the winner, uh, Shire, is getting taken over by a... a Chinese company, I believe. Okay. Uh, that's up 15%, or uh, $19.81. Cell Jeans up 2%. Uh, taken away from it, uh, Tesla's the culprit. Look at the big three in terms of yeah. Tesla, Ooh. Amazon, Netflix. Yeah. Tesla's down 8%. Amazon's down 6.7. Was that $100? Let me look at that. Yeah. <laughs> So, you want to do the math? 80 million shares for Bezos, oh. down $100, that's $8 billion today. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And then, so, here's a heads up, folks. February 9th again. They, they, these high volume lows, man, they're going after them. They're going to see their friends, see what's going on. Right. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow right now down 95, NASDAQ's up 100, S&P's are down 19 and a half. Come right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. You don't buy into that nonsense, do you? You know, you can't time the markets. I didn't. And in 2006, I set out on a mission to do just that. I began by surrounding myself with the greats like Tom O'Brien, Larry Pesavento, David White, and Basil Chapman. I read countless books and even looked to the moon and planets for answers. Now, we both know that trading is 80% mental. So I learned the exact tools that Tony Robbins uses to overcome fear. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability. And last March, the folks at Timer's Digest began tracking my newsletter signals, which through January 18th, 2018 placed me as the number one gold timer for that exact time frame. Now, I can't officially be recognized until Timers Digest has a full year of signals, but clearly, I've learned how to time the markets, and I'd like to teach you how to do that as well. Subscribers to Mastering Probability gain access to my live and archive workshops where I show you the exact same patterns that earn me this number one ranking. If you're looking for great market calls and an education, sign up for Mastering Probability today at TFNN.com. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Learn how to trade options with Swim Lessons. Brought to you by TD Ameritrade. Think or Swim. Next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. And uh, oil, oil 6460 right now. Yeah, so we'll check back in one more time. So it's about 10.55 a.m. Eastern time now, 25 minutes since those numbers. And again, we were looking at the possible setups of the 12 noon trade. So we'd have an extra 
an hour and five minutes from right. right now, still they'd be active. Got quite a spike above $65, up to 65.11. Man, again, these are five-minute bars all the way from 65. Seriously. It's a good 60-cent bar in oil and trading right now 64.54. So be interesting to see how the next hour plays out. Well, but, 65 uh, minutes. Exactly. You got it. the trade. Exactly. Let's go to our man, Mark in Bedford. Hey, Mark, what's going on, brother? How much, guys? How are you? Happy Easter to you. Happy Easter, Easter too. Awesome. Yeah. We're off Good Friday. How cool is that? I know. <laughs> Short trading week. Gotta love it. Tomorrow should be hey, exciting, Tom, too. Gold is tanking. Um, do you have any news on what's up with that? Well, that's gold for you. <laughs> let's, let's go take a look at it. So, uh, right now we're down in a 1360. You're trading 1334. Um, you, you get 252,000, but you're going into 450,000, I believe. Let me just see what this is. Uh, we see we're rolling contracts right now, too. So, you know, big sign of strength on the 21st. Another sign of strength on the 20, what is that, 29th? 23rd. That'd be 23rd. Wednesday and Friday. Right. Um, you know. I, I still like what it's doing. And we're just back to the beginning yeah. of Friday to put things in context. Right. It's only Wednesday. And if we, let's see, so that's 253 if I go to the J contract. Sorry, I don't know, 253. Uh, GCJ. Uh, 253 was the amount of volume that we've done okay. thus far. With them. Yeah, bottom line, Mark, I like it. Yeah, so you're going into, four, you're going into 470. Okay. 470 and 450. It's going to have to need a lot more than 250. It'll do like three and a quarter out here today, probably, Mark. Cooking, right. brother. Thanks, Mark. Happy Easter, guys. You Happy too, man. Easter. Stay right there, folks. Swim lessons. Uh, man, Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back. Is it you got days? It. It's Wednesday. That's, That's a beautiful it. thing. You got it. <laughs> Basil Chapman has just announced that on Tuesday, April 3rd at 6 p.m., he'll be hosting a special 90-minute webinar for all of his subscribers titled The Power of the Fourth Highest Peak, The Peak D in the Chapman Wave. During this 90-minute live webinar, Basil will be discussing how to use the fourth highest peak, the Peak D, as a heads up for either a directional reversal of consequence or a momentary pit stop for further gains in the Chapman Wave. He'll also be going over what the weekly and monthly implications are for the key indices with their Peak Ds and even Peak Es, together with the H pattern in the Chapman Wave that he's been following for weeks with his subscribers. Now is a perfect time to sign up for Basil's daily trading service, The Opening Call, while gaining access to the April 3rd live online webinar. Remember, all new subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. For all the details and to sign up today for Basil's Opening Call, visit the front page of TFNN.com.